In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the quickest and easiest pot holder ever. It's a no fuss method and you can whip one up in about 10 minutes. It's also perfect for a beginner. Let me show you how. To make your pot holder, you're going to need two pieces of fabric at 10 inches by 10 inches squared, another piece at 2 inches by 5 inches, and a piece of batting. Now I'm using Insole Bright, which has an insulation in it, which just means my pot holder will provide my surface with a bit more protection. If you'd like to, you could even use two pieces if you're really worried about the surface that you're trying to protect with your pot holder. Now you could make these any size you'd like. You could make them larger or smaller or even to fit a particular maybe dish you've got. But today let's go with 10 by 10. So let's start off by pressing our 2 by 5 inch piece, which is going to be for our loop. With the wrong side of the fabric facing me, I'm going to fold it in half lengthways and press lining up these edges here then what I'm going to do is open it up and then these two edges I'm going to fold into the center where we just pressed and I'll give it a press and then I'll do the same on the other side so just folding in this edge in towards the center and pressing and then I'll just fold it in half again and just press Okay, let's sew that. So now we're just going to sew along this edge, closing it up so we've got our little loop for our pot holder. I will just pop a pin in to hold it in place so those edges are all lined up nicely. Now I'm going to be sewing with a seam allowance of about one eighth of an inch. All we're trying to do is just close it shut. So I'm not going to worry about a back stitch and I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5. Okay, cutting the thread. Now we'll set this aside and pin our pot holder together and sew that. So placing our batting down first, take one of your pieces of fabric and place it on top, making sure all the edges are lined up nicely and keeping an eye on the direction of the fabric. I can see some of my strawberries are facing me and some of them are facing the other way. And then what I'm going to do is take my second piece of fabric, again checking the direction of it, for example, I could put it this way so they'd be facing different directions, but I think I want it this way. Then I'm going to turn it over so the two pieces are right sides together. And then again, I'm going to line up all those edges. So I want it all lined up perfectly. Then I'm going to take some pins and I'm going to pin it. And what I like to do is start on all four corners first. And then I will just pop in a few extra around the edge so it's just going to stay in place. So once you're happy that that's all pinned nicely, let's just come back to our loop that we made. What we're going to do is fold that in half lengthways and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a corner that we'd like it to be from so again if your fabric is directional just make sure it makes sense with the direction of your fabric then what I'm going to do is remove this pin open it up so I can see the inside or the right side of my fabric and I'm going to place that on top there so placing it down so that it's straight and when I say straight it's pointing right down the center not crooked but then also at the top so that when we're sewing around the edge we're going to be catching the whole loop if anything you'd want it a little bit more over than too far down because then you might not catch it properly when we're sewing that corner so bringing that right up making sure i'm happy with how it's sitting then i'll fold this piece on the top again how it was and then i'm just going to pop a pin back in there just like that. Now I like my loops in the center like that. You might actually prefer yours on the side. It's just a personal preference. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew around the entire edge, but we do need to leave an opening. So you could mark it. So I'm just gonna mark my opening. And that's about four inches, three or four inches just enough room so we can pop our hand in there to turn it right sides out. So now let's sew. So finding the second mark that I made it is a little bit tricky because it's yellow on yellow but I can see it. I'm going to start right there so lifting up my foot and I'm going to be stitching with a quarter inch seam allowance 
and if anything a generous quarter inch seam allowance. My foot here is actually a scant quarter inch and I'm coming right over it and making it a generous quarter inch. I will go forward and then I will do a back stitch. I like to do a back stitch when we have to turn things right sides out because it does tend to pull at our stitches. And I've I've not changed any of the settings. I'm still stitching at stitch length 2.5. I'm going to come down to the corner and I'm going to do my best guess at where about a quarter inch would be to turn. I'm going to do one more stitch. Lift my foot up and turn and that looks about right. If it wasn't right, I could have reversed back or I could have done an extra stitch. So coming up to my next corner, doing exactly the same, making sure my needle's down when I turn. I haven't come quite far enough. So coming up to my loop, I am going to just do a back stitch so it's nice and secure, and then just turning exactly like I have been. I'll go forward a few stitches and do another back stitch. And now I can see I'm coming up to that first mark that I did for my opening. I'll sew right up to that, do a back stitch, and then cut my thread. So now we're just going to come to all the corners and trim the excess, including where I've got my loop there. Don't get too close to the stitches. So we'll just do that on all four corners. So then what we're going to do is find the opening and put our hand in between the two fabrics, grab a corner and pull it gently right sides out. And then get it sitting the best that you can. And then I like to use a point turner or you could use something similar and just give the all four corners a gentle push so they're sitting really nicely. This is a bit fiddly but definitely worth the extra effort to make sure everything's sitting really nicely. Okay so it's looking cute let's give it a quick press. So now what we need to do is press out all the seams and then just press our opening so it's sitting as best as it can be. I'm just going to give the underside a bit of a press first. Again, this is a little bit fiddly. What we want it to look like is that the opening was never there. So just have a play until you're happy with how it's sitting. And press. And then what I'm going to do is come around to the other three sides and just roll it out so that these seams are sitting out as flat as they can be. And it's all these little details that just help it look really nicely finished. Okay, I'm back where I started. I'll just give the whole thing a quick press. And then what we will do is just pin that opening shut so that when we get to it, we're going to be sewing it closed nicely. Now let's just sew around all four edges doing a top stitch which will close our opening and it's also decorative. So now I'm just finding my opening and I want to start just before the opening and we're going to be sewing with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and if anything you want to be coming in from that not over because we do want to be able to close our opening. I've changed my stitch length to stitch length 3 and I'm not going to worry about a back stitch because we're going to be coming back over the top of it. Removing my pin when it's in the way. So when I come up to the loop, I'm just going to stop where it's joined there. Make sure my needle's down, lift my foot up and turn. Stitch across a few stitches, do my best guess again at the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and then carry on around the next side.
So now I'm coming right up to where I started. I'm going to stitch right over the top of those original stitches and then do a back stitch. Cut my thread and then with my scissors I will just trim any loose threads. So there's my cute little pot holder. One thing you could add is do some quilted details. You could sew along the diagonals or for example if I was clever enough I could maybe quilt a little story that would be really cute but I'm happy with how it is so I'll just be leaving mine like this. So there we have the pot holder. Wasn't that quick and easy? And if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. It really helps me out. Now I use two pieces of plain fabric at 10 inches by 10 inches, but you could use anything you'd like. You might have a spare block you could use, or you might want to use one of my scrappy techniques to make up one of the sides. I'll put a link up above so you can check that out. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.